Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for turning up. We've, uh, we've been on tour since Tuesday morning. We started off in doing a public meeting in Cornwall, uh, one in Devon, one in Somerset, Gloucestershire, Worcester Guildhall last night. Uh, was so overflowing, there was an angry mob outside who couldn't get in. So I had to give a speech outside and then another speech inside. Um, and that's why I'm using this loud hailer. The voice is beginning to get a bit weaker. Uh, we've had a great response. Uh, and I want to say this to you, as I said to all the meetings, whether you're a UKIP supporter, whether you're open-minded, whether you're totally opposed to us, we're pleased to see all of you because we believe that democracy should be a process where politicians engage with the voters. And, and frankly, the other parties seem to be in hiding these days. We're here. They We're rely, here. They rely. We're here. Good. Well, that's good, but your leader's not, you know. And, and we see, we see all three. busier than you. We see all three party leaders when they have meetings, they have organised meetings, and they don't actually let the public come in um, and question and perhaps criticise, and that's fine, and you're welcome, sir. No problem at all. Give him a clap, he's welcome. Now these, these elections coming up on May the 2nd do provide an opportunity. And I have a feeling, of all the counties I've visited so far, Staffordshire, I think, is the best of the lot. So well done. We've already managed to win seats on Staffs County Council. Um, I have a feeling uh, that on May the 2nd, We've got a chance in this county of establishing a really big group on that council. Yeah. Yeah. And the people of this county deserve to have some local politicians who are prepared to stand up and say, we haven't got the £32 billion that HS2 will cost. We'd be better off spending a fraction of that, having better rail services across the whole of the country. And that actually the theory that HS2 will be good for business in the north well, all the experience from France was when they built the high-speed rail from Paris to Marseille and reduced the time from six hours to three hours, all it did was drive more business towards Paris. Yeah, yeah. And I reckon that's what will happen to Manchester too. Yeah. So we'll oppose HS2. We will point out that every county council is in the job of providing services and that if we go on with a completely irresponsible open-door immigration policy the way we have, that will impact on every single person using services provided by the county council. Well, it's all well and good. It's all well and good for Labour to criticise us, but I, but sir, bear this in mind: this country, of all the countries in Europe, has had the best race relations of any European country. We have been welcoming to Jewish people fleeing Russia. Jewish people fleeing Nazi Germany, indeed 27,000 Ugandan Asians who came here when, Army threatened, when Idi Amin threatened to kill them. And all those migrant groups that have come here have been welcomed by the British people and in the main been very, very successful. But we ran a policy for 50 years where immigration into a country of 60 million people ran at between 30 and 50,000 people a year. And then Blair got elected. And for the last 10 years, immigration into Britain has averaged half a million people a year. Now, the people that have really paid the price for this have been ordinary working families. People who traditionally would probably have voted Labour. And I would point this out to you, that in 2004, youth unemployment in Britain was 600,000. Youth unemployment in Britain now is 1 million. 22% of our 18 to 24 year olds haven't got jobs. And all they hear from Conservative, Lib Dem and Labour is that our young people are all lazy and useless. They are not all lazy and useless. Most of them want to work. But because we have a massive oversupply from Eastern Europe in the unskilled labour market, they find themselves incapable of getting jobs. And that, I must say, that, I must say, is in many ways a betrayal of our youth. And one thing that we've got to point out is that from January the 1st next year, we are about to open the door Rubbish. to 29 million people rubbish. from Romania and Bulgaria. Rubbish. I agree, sir. It is rubbish. rubbish. It's total rubbish, isn't it? I agree with you. I couldn't agree more. I think it is madness. Absolute madness. Now, we don't, 
We have no. nothing against people no. from Romania and well, Bulgaria. Marriage, but I'll tell, you what, sir, no, I'll tell you what, sir. I'll tell you what, sir. What we want to do is put the interests of British people first. And I think what's interesting, what the gentleman there thinks we're European. <laughs> Hands up those who feel European. Yeah. Hands up those who feel English. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And it's the same if we were in Germany. And if we were in France. And if we were in Denmark. Because they don't feel European either. And Europe, Europe is not about a flag. Europe is not about an anthem. Europe is about different nation states. And I can tell you that the policy of putting 17 countries together in the Eurozone has brought disaster upon those poor people in the Mediterranean. And isn't that terrible? Isn't that awful? What we've done for working people is truly terrible. Anyway, anyway, uh, the point about democracy is that you actually should engage lightly with each other. But sometimes, with the Labour Party, that becomes a bit difficult. Anyway, we will not be diverted, we will not be put off, we're the only party in British politics actually speaking the same language as decent, ordinary people in this country. And I'm very, very pleased to be travelling around Britain, meeting our activists, meeting the public, and I would say, Alan, to you and all your candidates here in Staffordshire, Runs of a line on May the 2nd and cause an earthquake in Staffordshire.